Hello again. Today we will t start discussing moral theories. Now, um, this won't uh, we won't cover all the moral theories in one lecture. I'll break it up into two or three lectures. Okay. Why are we talking about moral theories? Well, moral theories will help you, you know, realize where different people are coming from in their moral commitments and. Um, you know, what sort of assumptions they're making when they're making a moral argument. Um, and so we'll get some of the major moral theories out on the table. And that's, uh, you know, what we were doing with the first lecture was we were trying to give some, you know, common distinctions when it comes to morality, ethics, in terms of what sorts of statements they involve, because moral arguments involve moral statements just as all arguments involve statements. All right, let's get on to our lecture on moral theories. So moral theories are theories about the nature of moral judgments or theories giving criteria for right and wrong. Moral theories are theories about the nature of moral judgments or they're theories giving criteria for right and wrong. Now, we call Theories about the nature of moral judgments, meta-ethical theories, and theory, theories that give criteria for right and wrong, normative ethical theories. So, what's a meta-ethical meta theory? It's, it's a theory about the nature of moral judgments. So, can moral judgments be true? Are they true? Um, are all moral judgments false? Are they the sort of thing that are moral judgments, are they the sort of thing that's capable of being true or false? These are all questions in meta-ethics. So an example of a meta-ethical theory would be error theory, the claim that all moral statements are false. So if I uh, say something like lying is wrong, you could, if error theory is true, you could rightly say, well, no, um, it's false that lying is wrong. But you could also say that it's false that truth-telling is right, um, or that truth-telling is wrong. So error theory is a, just a, is a meta-ethical theory that says that all moral statements are false. So meta-ethical theories are theories about the nature of moral judgments. Are they capable of being true or false? Are any of them true? That sort of thing. A normative theory gives, a cri gives criteria for right and wrong. Um, so an example would be, Something is wrong only if it causes pain. So I can, on this theory, you can do whatever you want, so long as you don't conflict, um, inflict pain on anyone, including yourself, perhaps. Um, so this is a normative theory. It gives standards for right and wrong. Um, standards for right and wrong. So um, this standard would be don't cause pain, otherwise... Uh, you know, you're, you're not doing anything wrong. So there are meta-ethical theories and there are normative theories. Um, the one talk about the, talks about the nature of moral judgments. The other talks about the standards for right and wrong. Okay, here are some examples of meta-ethical theories. Emotivism, relativism, error theory, and realism. Here are some examples of normative theories, consequentialism, deontology, virtue theory. And we'll talk about each of these in turn. Okay? For today, we're just going to talk about emotivism and relativism. So emotivism says that moral value judgments are not true or false, but they're merely expressions of our attitudes or emotions. So, you know, when we say something like murder is wrong, what we really mean is like, Murder, boo, you know, it's your, your expression of a negative attitude uh, about murder. And when we say something like kindness is good or kindness is right, you should act in a kind way. What you're saying is something like kindness, yay. So really, you're not saying anything true or false when you say kindness is good and murder is bad. You're merely expressing your likes or dislikes, your attitudes or your emotions. You can call this the boo yay theory, and a good way to remember emotivism is that it has the word it has the word emotion in it. Emotion, emotivism, moral judgments are attitudes or emotions. But here's a serious objection to emotivism: is 
the, the fact that people disagree about morality. I think we can all say that people disagree about what's right and what's wrong. Like just look at uh, Democrats and Republicans. They have different conceptions of what's right and what's wrong. Okay, these aren't, this isn't a difference between Democrats and Republicans, but suppose that one person says killing is wrong and the other says killing is okay. Well, that, you know, that might be the case for abortion, right? Like um, where uh, Republicans say killing is wrong in the case of abortion and Democrats say killing is okay in the case of abortion, right? Actually, that's a good example right there. Okay, so, uh, you know, for the emotivist, these statements boil down to an expression of emotion. Killing, boo. Abortion, boo. Killing, yay. Abortion, well, not yay for abortion. I don't know if anyone says yay for abortion, but like, you know, abortion, it's okay, or something like that. I don't know. Uh, but, you know, this isn't genuine disagreement. So if you think that there really can be disagreement, if you really think there can be disagreement about moral claims, you know, that one person says killing is wrong, the other says killing is okay, then you shouldn't hold to emotivism because they say that uh, disagreement just boils down to expression of opposing emotions. So a disagreement is saying something like you say A and I say not A. You say A and I say not A. But that's not what's going on when you express emotions, right? Where one, when, you know, I think of killing, um, it makes me sad. Or when the other person thinks of killing, it, it makes them happy or apathetic or whatever. Um, so they're not disagreeing. One just feels happy when they think of a certain thing, and the other feels sad when they think of a certain thing. To disagree would be to say, I believe killing is wrong, and you believe killing is okay. Um, so, it, in sum, if you think there's something, you know, if you think there can be genuine disagreement when it comes to morality, then you shouldn't be an emotivist because the emotivist, there can't, for on, the, on emotivism, there can't be genuine disagreement, just different expressions of emotion. Now, what about relativism? Relativism says, first of all, that all moral value judgments are det determined by a society's beliefs towards actions or behaviors. And the second statement is that there are no objective or universal moral value judgments. So all moral value judgments are determined by society's beliefs towards actions or behaviors. And the second claim is that there are no objective or universal moral value judgments. So on this, um, you know, like a moral judgment that uh, killing is wrong is determined by the society's beliefs about killing. So if the society disapproves of killing, um, then killing is wrong. If, this is, if, the, if the society disapproves of stealing, stealing is wrong. If the society disapproves of lying, lying is wrong. If the society approves of truth-telling, truth-telling is right or good. If the society approves of kindness, then Kindness is good. So morality is just determined by the society on relativism. If a society thinks that something's wrong, then it's wrong. If it thinks that something is right, then it's right. And there's nothing more to morality than that. But there are some objections to relativism. First, though, let's get to an argument for relativism. What arguments are there? Well, there's one main argument, the cultural differences argument. This says that Different cultures have different moral codes. Therefore, there is no objective truth in morality. Right and wrong are only matters of opinion, and opinions vary from culture to culture. Okay, so it's saying something like this. When you look at all the different cultures, they disagree about what's right, and they disagree about what's wrong. You know, you might visit Peru, you know, and they think one thing is right, and then you visit um, the United States, and they think... The opposite is right. They think that the Peruvians, um, when they say that something is right, that, that they're wrong about that. Okay, so different cultures have different moral codes. Uh, one example would be like um, 
you know, the Eskimos, um, I don't know if they still engage in this practice, but the Eskimos uh, used to put their children out into the snow to uh, let them, to expose them to the elements to let them die if they, if they, you know, they didn't think they could support their, um, their child. Um, but here in the United States, we would, we wouldn't think of doing such a thing. You know, imagine someone in Michigan in the middle of winter saying, I'm going to put my baby out in the snow, you know, just kind of, you know, let it die peacefully, probably won't be peacefully, but yeah. we would put that person in jail. Um, so different cultures do have different moral codes. Um, and the conclusion of this argument is supposed to be there, therefore, there's no objective truth to morality. Right and wrong are just matters of opinion. And opinions vary from culture to culture. So we can't really discuss it, but what do you think of this argument? Is it good or is it bad? I would like to say something against the argument. This argument is bad. The, why is it bad? Well, it ha it's invalid. Remember we talked about uh, validity versus invalidity? Well, um, this is claiming that the conclusion follows, the conclusion two follows from the premise, premise one, uh, but it actually doesn't follow. Just because people disagree about something, it doesn't mean there's no truth of the matter. So it becomes clear when you compare it to something like science. You could say different cultures have different views regarding the uh, chemical composition of water. You know, here in the United States, we believe it's H2O. This is just a fanciful example. But over, you know, in Germany, those Germans, they believe it's XYZ. So different cultures have different opinions regarding the chemical composition of water. Therefore, there's no objective truth regarding the chemical composition of water. Obviously, that conclusion doesn't follow from the premise. Simply because two different cultures disagree about the chemical composition of water, it doesn't mean there's no fact of the matter regarding water's chemical composition. So just because two people disagree, or two cultures disagree, it doesn't mean there's no fact to the matter. It, and, you know, if it doesn't work in the case of science, it, it won't work in the case of morality, because uh, the argument is flawed in its very structure. Well, you know, that's my piece about that argument. But you, you, you can uh, think it over, decide whether you think the argument's good or bad for yourself. Okay, now that we're done with the argument for relativism, let's discuss some objections to rel relativism. So, if relativism is true, 1 through 5 is true. But 1 through 5 are sort of, I would call them, bad consequences of relativism. Number 1, no society is superior or inferior to another. Now, it might not be polite to say that your society is superior to another, or it might even seem, you know, prideful, uh, arrogant. Uh, but the fact of the matter is that some societies can be superior to other societies. Now, relativism says that no society is superior or inferior to any other. Why? Because, at least morally. Because if morality is just a matter of what the society agrees to, all you have is one society um, has what's wrong for one society is not wrong for another society, and that's okay. Um, so one society uh, thinks truth-telling is good, another society thinks truth-telling is bad, and we're all okay. I'm okay, you're okay. No one society is better than the other. Now, relativism has that conclusion because it says that the truth of morality for, I mean, the moral claims, the truth of the moral claims are determined by each individual society. Um, so they each get to determine their own moral code, and that's okay, and one can't judge another. Okay, however, societies can be superior to others. Okay, a society uh, such as, um, uh, you know, Britain in the World War II era, a society such as Britain that uh, uh, fights Germany to save the Jews, for example. I'm not saying that was 
Britain's reason for going to war, but suppose they uh, were fighting the Germans to save the Jews. The, Brit the Brits are better, are superior, more superior to the Germans, since the Brits were fighting to save the Jews while the Germans were fighting to exterminate them. So we can say with certainty that Britain, in fighting on behalf of the Jews, is superior morally to Germany in fighting to exterminate the Jews. Okay, just in that one respect that we're looking at. So, relativism says no society is superior to another, but we can clearly see that some societies are superior to others. Second consequence of relativism, that's negative. Every society's laws are morally infallible. Okay, relativism says that every society's laws are morally infallible. So, if a society thinks that it's okay to kill, then it is okay for them to kill. If a society thinks it's okay to lie, then it is okay for them to lie. They can't be wrong about that. If, to be infallible means that you can't be wrong about something. So a given society can't be wrong about what's right or what's wrong since they're the ones who determine what's right and what's wrong. However, the moral codes of certain societies are in error. And we can recognize that. Just look at you, the United States um, in the 60s. The United States in the 60s. We've got the civil rights movement going on. You also have um, a lot of racism. You, all, you have a lot of sort of uh, institutionalized racism. Okay. If every society's laws are morally infallible, then in for, for the American society in the 1960s, or say even earlier, the 50s or the 40s, for the American society to think that um, sort of, uh, let's see, um, segregation, yeah, I was looking for that word. For the American society to think that segregation is morally okay, then it is okay. But we can clearly see now in 2017 that moral seg um, racial segregation is not okay. So, relativism has the uh, um, consequence that uh, America in the 1940s, they were without error in what they thought was right and what they thought was wrong. But clearly, they were in error when it came to racism. And so relativism has that bad consequence. It, it can't be right on that. Three, there is no moral progress on relativism. There's just a shift from one moral code to another. So when we went from segregation to desegregation, on relativism, that's not an improvement. It's just a move from one viewpoint to another. There's no moral progress. So if you think, you know, MLK Jr. was doing something good, in fighting for desegregation, uh, peacefully fighting for desegregation, well then you should reject relativism because on relativism Martin Luther King wasn't doing anything good. He was just shifting the society from one moral code to another. But it's worse for uh, Martin Luther King. Look at four. Moral revolutionaries are immoral. On relativism, moral revolutionaries are immoral. Why? Because whatever the society says is right, is right. This means that Martin Luther King Jr. in fighting for uh, desegregation was being immoral because he was going against the moral code of the society in which he was living. If morality is determined by the society and Martin Luther King Jr. was going against that morality, he was doing something morally wrong. But I think we all can say, I hope we all can say, that more Martin Luther King Jr. was fighting for what was right. And that he was not immoral for fighting for desegregation. If we can say that, then relativism is false. Finally, five. Tolerance is only valuable if a society holds to it. So in America, United States, where we value tolerance, you know, um, that's only valuable because we value it, but in other countries where they don't 
uh, value tolerance. Say, I don't know, there's countries where they throw homosexuals off the roof of the roofs of buildings uh, if they find out that they're homosexuals. They're throwing them off a building simply because they're homosexuals. Now, I would call that uh, fairly intolerant to throw a homosexual off a building um, in order to kill them simply because they are a homosexual. Okay. In that society, they don't really value tolerance. And so in that society, for them, tolerance is not valuable. Um, literally, truly, tolerance is not valuable because if you your society holds that something is not valuable, then it's then it really isn't valuable. If your society holds that something is valuable, then it really is valuable. So these are some uh, consequences of relativism. That if relativism is true, one through five is true. But it seems clear that one through five are all false. So, relativism can't be true.